Hello! NetBeans IDE 8.1 provides a range of free and open source new features for JavaScript developers. Not only are you able to create Node.js applications, whether for the backend or for the front end via Express.js, not only do you have new features for Angular, but there's also enhancements to the NetBeans connector plugin for Chrome. In this quick screencast, I want to show you what you can do with the NetBeans Connector plugin for Chrome and what is new in NetBeans IDE 8.1. To demonstrate the new features, I'm going to use a very small example that is available on GitHub. Notice that the GitHub repository contains a bower.json file, it contains a public HTML folder and a test folder, and for the rest, these are standard files, git ignore, bower rc, readme, there's nothing NetBeans specific in my repository. I go into NetBeans, I go to team, to get, and to clone. I put in there the URL to my repository and the folder where it should be put locally. I click finish, NetBeans checks out that repository, and because there is a bio.json file in my project structure, NetBeans knows what to do with it. It opens it as a project and tells me to review the default settings that NetBeans has defined here. So we're going to say, okay, this is going to be the source of our project, the source folder. This will be the test folder. And we click OK. And what we see here is that NetBeans has completely understood our instructions. And without there being anything NetBeans specific in our repository, we now have a NetBeans project structure. We look in the Bower JSON file and we see here that we have a knockout dependency. When we right click on our project, we choose Bower install and automatically Bower is run from inside NetBeans. And based on where we have defined in the Bower RC, we can see here this is where we've defined a Bower component should be located. This is where NetBeans has put our knockout library. We look inside the app.js, and here are the countries, together with their states, that you want to display in an HTML5 view. We look in our index.html file, and we can see that here there is a reference to our Bower components. So this is our knockout location, and we can open that directly from there and see knockout.js. We also see that we have registered our app.js, and in other words, this application is good to go. Let's run the application into the Chrome browser, and in that Chrome browser is where I've installed the Chrome Connector plugin for NetBeans. You can see this NetBeans icon up here, and you can also see that NetBeans Connector is debugging this tab. First thing we can do with this NetBeans icon is we can say, let's change the size, the resolution of the browser window to be, in this case, smartphone portrait to make it a bit smaller so that we can place it right next to our NetBeans IDE. Once you've set up our browser next to the IDE to make it easy to work with together, we can connect the two together and say inspect the NetBeans mode. And as we click on items in the browser, notice that in the lower left in the browser DOM window, what we have selected in the browser is shown selected inside of the browser DOM window, and vice versa. We can move up and down the DOM hierarchy in the browser DOM window. So notice my mouse is now on the bottom left, and I can see where I am in the browser DOM window. What we can also do is we can style directly in here our content that is displayed in the browser. So right now we have here a label. There are no properties set here. There are no styles applied. But if we were to add a CSS style sheet, so let's do that right now. Um, let's say here is our style sheet. We call it styles. And we will add, let's say we'll add an H1 style. And we'll set the color to red. And we'll now assign that style sheet to our HTML file. So I just need to drag and drop it. And then we can go in and find our label. So we can jump directly to the source, 
find where the label is found. Let's add here an H1 around the label. So what you see here is that the label is H1 and we set in our style sheet that the H1 should be red. And let's change it to another color and immediately in the browser we can see the update. Meanwhile in the CSS styles window when we select an item in the browser we can change that item directly to whatever color we like. So we have here a GUI dialog on top of what you see in the browser. So we can make changes here and from here we can jump back into our source code as well. Now what is new in NetMuse IDE 8.1 is that since what we have here is an HTML5 component that makes use of the shadow root concept, we can browse into that shadow root. So look in the bottom left and you can see that we can dig into the content of this more complex HTML component. If you look back inside the browser and read about the shadow DOM, this is a very important aspect of Polymer. In Polymer, there's a concept of a shadow DOM, which separates content from presentation, eliminating naming conflicts and improving code expression. If you read through here, we can see and read about shadow DOM subtrees and code fragments and the like. And inside NetBeans, we find that expressed, this concept of the shadow DOM in this browser DOM window, allowing us to dig deep into the components that have been defined especially the more advanced HTML5 components, enabling us also to go and jump into the source. And again, we could set styles for the particular elements within the Shadow DOM. A second new feature in NetMuse IDE 8.1 that relates to the Chrome Connector plugin is that the Knockout window is new in NetMuse IDE 8.1 and allows us to see the binding context of the object selected within the browser. If you read the knockout documentation, you'll read about the binding context, and it's a very nice idea of predefined data being found in objects and made available by the knockout framework. So a binding context is an object that holds data that you can reference from your bindings. Uh, inside NetBeans, we can see what the binding context of the currently selected object is because this knockout window updates itself automatically based on what we have currently selected inside of the browser. So let us um, stop the inspector NetBeans mode. We'll select a country, um, let's say Afghanistan, we we'll tab out of it. We can see all the states within the country. We can start inspect in NetBeans mode again. And as we can see, um, the, the data binding context, for example, updates itself as we select a different object in the list. Um, if we stop again, and maybe we go to Germany, we tab out again, and we return to the inspect mode, which you can also do via a keyboard shortcut. Notice again that the knockout window updates showing the current context and the objects that relate to it and the information that can be obtained from, the, from a particular object provided by knockout. Now that we have the application running in the browser, did you know that if you're using the Chrome developer tools, you're automatically connected to NetBeans. There is a special NetBeans tab in the Chrome Developer Tools, which by default propagates changes done in the CDT back to NetBeans IDE and saves them there. You can disable this, of course, but you can work with the Chrome Developer Tools in combination with NetBeans, knowing that anything you change in the CDT will be saved in the file that, you, that is related to that inside NetBeans IDE. So that's it. Um, in NetBeans IDE 8.1, the Chrome Connector plugin has been extended to include the possibility of exploring the Shadow DOM and also of exploring the Knockout binding context. These two, these two features are unique to the NetBeans Chrome Connector plugin and should really help you in doing advanced development using Polymer, where Shadow DOM is a, is a standard new concept as well as the binding context, which is a standard concept from Knockout. With that, we wish you all the best with NetBeans and the Chrome Connector plugin in making advanced websites in JavaScript.